It's your Montreal premiere, I believe. So yes. you're showing 68 photographs. I was wondering how you actually selected these 68 mm. photographs. I actually, uh, these are for, some of them are from uh, sh shows I've done before, mm. and they were basically I pick my most important pictures, the pictures I think tell the story of my experience in the 60s, and also are the most beautiful. So. Uh, First for me is the beauty of the image, and secondly is the relevance to what the point of the show is. And this show was the spirit of a generation which talks about the optimism of the 60s and how we who were part of it wanted to, uh, were trying to make the world a better place. The goal was a, a utopia, let's create a utopian society. So the Woodstock Festival was really the culmination, as you say, the apex of it. It was a utopian experience, a utopian vision that happened in real life for three days. And it showed what could happen if everyone thought the proper way, let's help our neighbor, let's help anyone we can, let's be kind to everyone, let's not push and shove, and let's all pull together and try and make, make life better, make life good for everyone else. How many misses to get one good shot? Oh, well, I tell people, you know, if someone says or thinks I'm a great photographer, my photographs are great, you know, I tell them I'm not a great photographer, I'm a great editor. <laughs> I used to shoot a lot. Uh, I, uh, people who I was with said, boy, you sure take a lot of pictures. And I said at that time, no one ever paid me for a picture I didn't take. The, the, the subtext of that, the deeper message, was that if I, if I stop taking pictures, then I may miss something. Uh, for me, unless the color itself is important, I prefer black and white because uh, my, my teacher, a man named Lauren Shustak, only had one, one man, one teacher in photography. Um, he said the colors of photography are black and white. <laughs> you know. And in general, that's pretty true, but then sometimes the color is important, like the infrared. I was shooting for the color, for the richness of the color. So it's really a call that uh, at the time you had to have a separate camera for color and for, for black and white because you couldn't take a color slide and make a good black and white print of it. So when I shoot digital now, where you can use the same image for both black and white and color, when I'm shooting it, I make a judgment call. This is a black and white picture. Like, was I photographing you now? It would be black and white because the color is not special here, you know, for example. So I do set the camera for black and white or for color in digital. When I, and I, so I make that call beforehand because to have to sit at the computer and say, gee, that looks good in black and white, that looks good in color. I mean, I don't live to do photography. I do photography as part of my, my living. And it just would take too long, to, and I, who knows? So most of the time, I know in advance what I want to do with the picture, you know, what I feel the, the vibration or the feeling of the moment is. And Herman Leonard said to us last trip, the way to get up close and personal with my subjects was to actually make myself invisible. I was wondering what was your trick to get close to... The it was the same thing. I, I don't say invisible, but I never impose myself on them. Whenever I photograph anyone to this day, whether it's a, a famous person or a child, I totally let them be as they wish to be. I don't talk to them to try and make them smile or make them unhappy or make them stand a certain way. I would just take the camera and start shooting. If they're standing there, then I go there. I don't say, would you move over here? I don't ask them to do anything. I let them feel as natural as possible. So that's the same thing as I'm not imposing my consciousness, my desires on someone, which is what you mean by invisible. There is, however, Another thing that I do sometimes at concerts, when I really do try and not be seen, and the way I do that, you know, it's, it's an unconscious thing, but I looked at it at, at, at some point, is if I stop thinking, if I, st I turn off my awareness of everyone out there, I just kind of create it like a psychic wall between myself. It's not the wall I create, but I'm only, I'm, not, I'm no longer aware you're there, okay, for that moment. So when I'm photographing, it's just like, my, I cut my awareness off, it's a wall between me and everything else. And I do believe that if your attention is not at, on something else, then their attention won't be on you.